Takashi Murakami, Japanese artist. Born on February 1st, 1962, almost two decades after the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan during World War II. Takashi Murakami grew up in a family that was heavily influenced by art. His mother designed textiles and his brother was an artist. His parents would often take him to art exhibits, then have him write reviews on them. He learned to be competitive and to have critical thinking skills at a very young age. The artwork by Takashi Murakami that I chose is Kiki. It is a sculpture he created in 2010. Its medium is oil, acrylic, fiberglass, and iron. It is located in the Venus Drawing Room exhibit in the State Apartments and Gardens of the Chateau Versailles outside of Paris. Kiki by Takashi Murakami can best be described as a cartoon-like or an anime character. It is a three-dimensional sculpture. The bottom of the sculpture is a sphere made of flowers. The flowers are made up of a variety of colors from white, lime green, baby blue, red, orange, and many other colors. Each flower has two circles as eyes. Each flower also has an open mouth. There is no space in between the flowers. They are made up of the entire sphere. Kiki is standing directly on top of the floral sphere. The majority of her body is covered by this pink one piece, with the exception of her hands and feet showing, which are light beige. Her hands do not have fingers and her feet do not have toes. The jumpsuit Kiki has on is also on her head as it appears she is wearing a hoodie. The hoodie has bunny-like ears on the top with red Japanese symbols on them. It may be that Kiki has two sets of ears. There is the bunny-like ones on top of her head and another pair on the side of her head. They are light beige like her face, hands, and feet. They are round with openings, normal ears. The inside of her ears are pink. Kiki's face matches the rest of her body that the viewer can see. Her head is very circular and is a lot larger than her body. Her head is about the same size as the floral sphere she is standing on. She has three eyes, all which look different other than them being the same color green. Her eye furthest to the left is halfway open. You can see her eyeball and lid and her lashes are sticking outward. Her eyes in the center is the largest. It is wide open and her eyeball is looking upward. The eye furthest to the right is similar in size to the one on the left, on the far left. This eye, like the eye in the center, is wide open and looking upward, although they are looking upward in different directions. Her eyelashes on both eyes appear to be against her face. She has two small slits as nose, as a nose. It appears that she may only have nostrils. Her mouth is a half circle, it is wide open, and it gives off the idea that Kiki is smiling and is pleasant. She has two white fang teeth showing. Her mouth is a deep red and there are two black holes that appear to be her airway. Her tongue is bright red and is not poking out in any way. Kiki appears to be holding a black pole. The pole extends diagonally to her, the right of her and is up in the air. At the top of the pole, there is a bouquet-like of three skulls. The skulls are as cartoon-like as possible. They are black and white. They have different colored eyes, a nose, with it, each having a nose ring in them, and what appears to be the top part of their teeth. Takashi Murakami uses a variety of formal elements of art in his creation Kiki. He uses color, form, line, and space. Murakami uses a variety of primary and secondary colors and throughout the sculpture of Kiki. The entire sculpture has form. The head of Kiki and flowers are in the shape of a sphere. Kiki's facial features and head are made up of mainly geometric lines. Her ears and the rest of her body are made up of organic lines. The flowers are made up of both organic and geometric lines. There is some implied lining with the direction of her eyes that are facing upward. The sculpture is three-dimensional. The actual sculpture takes up positive space while the space around it is negative. Murakami also uses a variety of principles of design. He uses repetition in the flowers to create the sphere that Kiki is standing on. Murakami is known to have disproportions in his figures. The head of Kiki is significantly larger than her body. Kiki's mouth and eyes take up the majority of her face. Murakami uses variety in the colors that he uses to create the floral sphere and the variety of shapes he uses to create Kiki's face. Takashi Murakami was influenced a great deal by his own Japanese culture and their way of creating art. 
specifically by anime, which is Japanese animation, and manga, which is Japanese comics. His culture had the biggest impact on forming Murakami's art style. He was also heavily influenced by the American culture and their way of creating art. He was introduced to America by his father at a young age. He is mostly compared to Andy Warhol, for they have both created mass-produced pop art. His art is known for being a cross between kitsch and grotesque. Murakami frequently uses the same or very similar cartoon-like characters in his artwork. His artwork is are also usually filled with bright exuberant colors. Murakami is also known for creating his own movement called Super Flat, which was known for bringing together Japanese cultures and pop culture. He is also known for helping develop neo pop, which is the new form of pop art. Murakami's art has been said to be created as a source of income rather than for interpretation. There is also research that shows that Murakami just like many other artists, may have been creating cartoon-like and childish artwork in or- as an outlet to the situation that they had went through with the atomic bombs. The innocence of many people was destroyed. Not only did the atomic bombs affect Japan in a physical state, but also in a mental state. Murakami's parents often told him that if the U.S. had dropped another atomic bomb, he may not have been born. Murakami often uses the term little boy to describe Japan. What he means by this, as he has said before, is that Japan is the little boy that, or little brother that is looking up to or intimidated by his big brother, which would be the U.S. The two critical approaches that are easily seen in Murakami's work are the social history and Marxism. There also is a biography end to it as well, as knowing his background does help interpret his work. He also uses some iconography of his culture since it does highly influence the way that he creates art. Now more into specifics about why Murakami may have created Kiki in Paris. Up until 2010, when Murakami had his exhibit in the Chateau Versailles, they had never seen such contemporary art as Murakami's. Many people found his artwork inappropriate and they actually tried to start a petition in order to get it removed from the museum. Murakami's intentions were to shock the viewers and he definitely accomplished doing so. Murakami wrote for himself, For a Japanese like me, the Chateau de Versailles is one of the greatest symbols of Western history. It is the emblem of an ambition for elegance, sophistication, and art that most of us can only dream of. Of course, we are aware that the spark that set fire to the powder of the revolution came directly from the center of the building. But in many respects, everything is transmitted to us as a fantastic tale coming from a very distant kingdom. Just as French people can find it hard to recreate in their minds an accurate image of the samurai period, the history of this palace has become diminished for us in reality. So it was probable that the Versailles of my imagination corresponds to an exaggeration and transformation in my mind, so that it has become a kind of completely separate and unreal world. That is what I have tried to depict in this exhibit. I am the Cheshire cat and welcome that welcomes Alice in Wonderland with its diabolic smile and chatters away as she wanders around the chateau. This definitely shows that Murakami was open to criticism and that it did not affect the way that he created art and it did not affect him as an artist. In cultures such as America, where pop culture is very recognizable and very popular, Murakami does not face such criticism. I recently got the opportunity to visit one of his exhibits in the Museum of Contemporary Art located in downtown Chicago. Now that I have done research on Murakami, it is easier for me to interpret and understand the things that I seen in the museum months ago. The artwork I created is a photograph. It is an image of a Chicago logo up front and the skyline and a sunset in the background. I took this image at the top of the Chicago White Sox Stadium. At first, it was difficult for me to become inspired by Murakami's art since I'm not familiar with creating anything similar. I then began to think about why Murakami created his art and how his culture influenced him. Murakami's style of art, like many artists before him, was used as a way to maintain innocence in his society after a tragic event. I was able to relate that to my society. Chicago is known 
to be a very dangerous city with violence occurring on an everyday basis. Art is definitely used as an outlet for that violence. My artwork is an example of that. As an outsider viewing the image, all you see is a beautiful sculpture and the architecture that Chicago has to offer. As an insider, it makes you forget about the violence. And in any society, artists use their artwork to help outsiders and insiders view their culture a certain way.